So in this video, I want to talk about the anime known as the Genius Prince Guide to Rising a Nation Out of Debt, as I've been re-watching and watching some old animes that I had watched that I want to re-watch and do a review on, and some animes that I'm just catching up on that I've kind of either not finished completely or need to watch in its entirety. And so I've been really enjoying just kind of going through that list, just watching some of these types of shows, and one of these is, of course, that. And this kind of follows a very similar anime that came out around the same time that followed the same concepts of kind of like economics, politics, you know, political maneuvering, some battle tactics and all that kind of stuff. And one of them was a double core and this one was a single core. And I feel like the other one went a little bit more deeper on the political side of things with the romance and the harem aspect, while this one tries to focus more on the comedy aspect and a little bit of the political maneuvering as well. Though I do feel like there is some hint of romance clearly in this from the main protagonist standpoint. Of course, there are hints of romance from the other female characters. Two of them, I feel like, do have feelings towards him. Though I, I'm still um and ahhing about the white hair girl, if she does have feelings for him. I kind of feel like she does, but she feels like she can't ever push those feelings because of her duty and all the rest. And also because of the sort of hatred towards her because of... Not towards by the main protagonist, but other people because of the fact that she has red eyes and white hair it's kind of she's seen as like a demon and that is actually something that i've seen in some animes is the concept of girls or individuals with white hair and red eyes i've seen it with a lot of female characters in animes where they're kind of demonized seen as like evil entities and i'm very fascinated by that clearly it's some cultural kind of thing in japan maybe i need to do a little bit more research on that because i think it's really interesting i've seen it a couple of times not heaps but a couple of times and i just it just fascinates me. I really do enjoy Japanese culture because it has some unique parts to it that you kind of learn. You're like, hmm, fascinating. And I, I know some people say, oh, you're a weeb for that. But I'm like, no, enjoying a country's culture is not weeby. Being weeb would be me just owning my own culture, being an Australian and going, oh, I'm Japanese. I'm not. I'm an Australian. I love my country. For the most part, it has flaws. But I also enjoy these kind of cultures as well because they all have different interesting things about them. But I really do like this anime. I like what it tried to accomplish. Though, that being said, as far as season 2 goes, it's one of those where I would really love a second season. And I talk about the chances on my other channel, my news channel. But it's just one of those where I'm just like, I would love for it. But it's just one of those where I'm like, uh, I, it feels like you kind of have to go to the source material. And seeing where that additional political man maneuvering could go would be really interesting. I do feel like there could be some potential romance build up as well between other characters, especially as he tries and does a lot of those kinds of things. Maybe one day I might read the light novels and do like a full on multi-part review of just doing one volume after another every month or something. It could be something that I could do. Maybe Patreon members could vote on it if they wanted to. Again, if you do want to support the channel, I do have a Patreon that gives Discord access and of course the ability to just talk to me directly and give your own feedback on what animes you'd like me to cover in what capacity. But one of the criticisms I did see about this anime actually when it first came out, because I watched a bit of it and then didn't get through it all, and then have gone back and rewatched it and watched all of it, was the first episode or couple of episodes people complained about due to, I think, one cut content, because there was apparently a lot of cut content in this, which is why I do feel like the chances of a season two are much lower. But then also just apparently animation complaints, people being like, not enough action, but I don't feel like this is a series that's meant to have a lot of action. It's more focused on the political aspect, the comedy aspect, and a drop or a hint of romance mixed in it. And so I think that's perfectly fine. I think that's what its objective is, and it does it perfectly fine. But if it is skipping a lot of content, as some fans have noted on light novel and anime fans, which is what I read when I was looking up at the chances of it, then that is a little bit disappointing. But you've also then got to draw yourself back and look at it from an anime only's perspective and look at the light novel and the anime and go, okay, what's the difference in pacing? Because this is one of the things that I've learned over the years when looking at light novels, mangas and animes and even web novels, because I don't really go through much web novel stuff, but occasionally I do. And as someone that does read a lot of light novels and then reviews the animes as well, 
Sometimes the light novels and the animes just don't work well together. The pacing would feel really janky and awkward if it's done like one-to-one. -one. And I see that a lot of the times is that you have this kind of parallel issue of light novel fans will complain when the anime is skipping stuff to keep the pacing good, that they go, oh, this is terrible, it's skipping too much, but this, that, and all the rest, and they go over all the minute details that have been skipped over. But then you see a series that goes through the light novel bit by bit by bit in an anime format, and then straight away the anime only fans just go, no, nah, I'm bored, this is too slow, it's just too much jargon, just added in unnecessary fluff and then they drop it and I think it is important to create a good balance between them and you've also got to remember that you know the anime is marketed at a different audience the light novel is there for the people reading reading is a very different experience than watching and so sometimes you need to remember that the anime and the light novel are very different experiences and are marketed at very different audience it's the same for the manga as well and that's the thing that I've had to learn as a individual consuming anime as well as a content creator analyzing and reviewing these kinds of things is that the pacing can be a little bit different and can kind of feel disappointing. And trust me, I've had many moments where I've sat there and kind of gritted my teeth and gone, damn it, why couldn't you have just covered that little bit? That is such a good pivotal moment and it would have been nice to be in the anime. But you've always got to remember pacing, pacing, pacing. It's a multitude of factors of one, maintaining interest because if the series goes too slow, anime only fans drop it, and then they're less likely to consider going to the light novels. And sometimes it is also good to have a bit of a difference so that it encourages anime only fans to go to the light novels from the very beginning and read your way all the way through. But I've always said, I feel like I've said the word but a lot, it is, it, it is important that the core aspects of the story are always in the anime. It always is important, and I emphasize on that, that all the major keynotes need to be in the anime to make sure the story is cohesive, makes sense, flows properly, and just, you know, gives a reason for people to go there. If it's completely different story, just kind of same name, same location, slight different, like, similarities, but the rest is all different, then it's a completely different story. It's like an anime original just using the name. And so I do think the anime did a great job at sticking to the core aspects of what the light novel was about, at least based on what I've read from fans. But there is a lot of little details when it comes to the politics and the maneuvering that has been skipped over, which is why I also do believe that this is a source material seller. I really enjoy the anime. I really loved it. I love the comedy aspect. I love this sort of inner monologuing as well, because a lot of animes don't do inner monologuing very much. This does that, and I love the little fun little animations where you've got him kind of thinking there, and then the little guy next to him being his little chibi form, kind of doing all the little dances and the movements based on what's going on in his head while these situations are playing out. And I think it did a really good job at that balance between action, monologuing, romance, comedy, politics, the pacing, it all did that very well. Though as far as the ending goes, that's one other area I've seen a lot of criticism on. I can definitely understand people concerned that the ending felt a little bit weak, a little bit soft on the end, kind of felt like it didn't have the same kind of crunch that they kind of wanted, where it was like this big revelation, that kind of big thing that kind of got them really wanting Hook to go read the light novels. But I think it was a pretty, it, it was a good ending where it plays because some endings can be really weird and janky and kind of feel displaced like it just feels like it's halfway through a story and it just randomly ends it at least ended on a good note as far as pacing goes at a major story point but it does kind of feel like it felt a little bit soft at its ending which could just be because again the material that it's going through it kind of got through to a point where it felt a little bit more softer in the end maybe if it went on a little bit further but Again, if it went too far in, then it could have rushed way too fast, and if it tried to slow down, it could have just ended on a weird note, and that's the thing about pacing. Pacing is extremely important on those things. So I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What did you think of this anime? Again, I enjoyed it. I liked it, but I don't think it's for everyone because these types of series are not heavy action-based, and so sometimes a lot of those political maneuverings can kind of disjoint a lot of fans. It depends on those different types. I can make many jokes about you know, political maneuvering, table episodes, those kinds of things. But I think it did a good balance. But these kinds of animes are not for everyone. They come around every now and again. And also it's not an isekai as well, which is nice and refreshing as well. 
I do like when they try and do these fantasy medieval political ones and they're not so much trying to recreate the whole same formula of isekai, isekai, isekai and they actually steer away from that. So I think that was refreshing as well. So good anime, not for everyone. Love to know your thoughts. If you like this video, hit the like, subscribe and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.